Look what we found. Sitting in a barn. This is a 1983 Honda CR250. These were awesome back in the day. Um, only 212 pounds, super light, super fast. It was a great bike. Um, so the guy had this, he said he, it did run at one point, um, but it's been sitting for years and uh, he decided to get rid of his collection. And that guy had a couple bikes from him. So he said a couple parts on it aren't original, like the kickstart, the DG pipe, which is kind of cool, and the silencer. It's missing the rear fender, but everything else is original. So, tires are pretty decent. It looks like it was actually ice raced at one point. It has like little places for studs. Engine looks fairly complete. Um, he said that the water pump wasn't corroded out, so that's good. Looks like there might be a little patch on there. And you might have to do that. These all corroded out. He said he drained the coolant before storing it though, so that's good. But yeah, I got this thing for a thousand dollars. I thought that was a pretty good deal considering it's very hard to find 83 250s that are pretty much complete. So we are going to see if we can get this thing running today. Should be pretty interesting. Looks like it's missing a lever up here too. Oh, it's got half the lever. Clutch pulls in. Looks like that. It's a little stiff. One ninety-seven. That's the front number plate. Looks like the throttle's working. The seat has a couple rips in it, but it looks like the original seat. Yep, it's got hot on the back of the seat. Let's see what's inside the gas tank here. Yeah, that's empty. So, it was stored empty. It rained all night, so the bike kind of washed off. It used to be full of barn dust. It's got the chain. Um, this one's got the, uh, the right hand chain and the left hand kick. Pretty cool bike. Looks like it might have been repaired right here too. Just a little bit of epoxy on there. But overall, it's not too bad. Pretty complete. Pretty nice looking bike. Not too bad. Let's see. Look at my coolant cap didn't come off. Yeah, there's no coolant in it. All right, let's start working on it. All right, we got her in the garage. Let's start working on it. See if we can get this thing to run and drive today. That is the goal. So let's check the oil first, see if there's anything in there. Ooh, crunchy. <laughs> Hopefully that's not water in there. Anything comes up on the dipstick here. I hope it's not white. It doesn't look like it. But it has been sitting for a while, so. We'll have to see. I'll we'll have to drain it. Looks pretty decent. I can get this dipstick down there. There we go. Pretty clear. Looks like brand new oil. So we'll drain it and make sure a little bit later, but at least there's some in there. All right, 
it looks like we've got a new air filter in there. Newer. Feels like it's oiled. Sweet. That looks pretty good. No mice in there or anything. Good deal. Alright, let's get this gas tank off. We are going to check for spark next. If we don't have spark, we're going to have to come down and uh, check out that stator. Hopefully, we have spark. Finally that bolt came out. No gas in the gas sink at all. Alright, let's see what we got going on. Coil. I don't know if that's original. Might be, possibly. Um yeah, that that one stripped out right there. We'll have to retap that. Radiators don't look too bad. The fins in there look okay, not all packed with dirt. This one has a couple bent ones, hopefully that does not leak. This side looks pretty good. We'll have to see if those are gonna leak. But uh, let's get that spark plug out next. Oh, it's on there. All right, who thinks it's gonna have spark? We've got an iridium plug BR8EIX. Let's see. Looks pretty black, doesn't it? Here we go, moment of truth. Will we have spark? Huh. Not seen anything yet. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys see that? All right, we're just gonna put a little bit of two-stroke oil down the cylinder here. Like I said, it's been sitting for a while, so it doesn't hurt to lube the cylinder before we go hard on it here. A little oil down there. All right, it feels pretty smooth when you kick it over. Feels really smooth. Kind of listen to it. Let's see if it goes through all the gears here. I think there's six on this one. Let's see. One. Two, three, four, five. Maybe it is only a five speed. So, it goes through all five gears. Let's do a quick compression reading. Just to see what we're dealing with for compression. It feels like a ton of compression, so. I wouldn't be surprised if it was easily over 150. All right, get your compression tester in. Let's 
let's see. Let's see what we get here. Holy cow, that's good compression. Barely kick it over. Feels like a ton. Where do we at? We're already at 150, 170 we're at already. I barely kicked this thing. Holy cow. That's got some crazy compression. Let's see. This keeps on sliding on me. I bet if we could keep kicking, we'd be over 200. We're at 150, 60, 70, 80, 185 pounds of compression so far, so. Yeah, that's plenty of compression. That's really good. All right, so so far this thing's looking like an easy fix. Should be running in no time. So we've got spark, we've got compression, now it's just getting fuel. And this looks like one of the easiest carbs ever to take out. Just two clamps and that thing should pull right out. This does have a removable subframe, by the way, as well. So, I think that was the first year of the removable subframe. I believe. But yeah, I was looking at the plastics, and the plastics are actually pretty nice in this thing. Frame looks good. Frame rails are a little dented down there. Probably from ice racing it. But, you know, can't be perfect. It's 1983. Also to check out the manifold, make sure that doesn't have any cracks in it. We don't want it to have an air leak. Alright. Manifold actually looks pretty decent. This is stuck way up there. That'd be a short slide. What the heck? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just completely disappeared. That would have sucked if it was missing the slide. <laughs> that is a big slide right there. Look at that thing. Beefy. Carb looks pretty clean. That's a big carb too. All right, let's start digging into that. Look who decided to make an appearance. The Vinmeister. What are you doing? <laughs> what do you think of the bike, bud? Oh, he's getting his toy. His bunny. Oh, that's your duck. Oh, now he's getting his other toy. <laughs> what are you doing, Vin? Come and check out the bike. Oh, there he is. You gonna look at the bike? What do you think? Look at this, look. What do you think of the bike? Oh, there he goes. What do you think? You approve? You approve? Come here, Vin. Come here. Come here. 
Do you approve or what? Do you approve of the bike? Sit, sit, shake, shake a paw. Shake a paw, shake, shake, shake. Give me that paw, shake, sit, shake. Thank you. <laughs> Crazy dog. All right, so it looked like when the guy stored it, he must have drained out the carb. Because it seems really clean. Let's see what it says, he's there. We've got the upgraded Allen bolts. Yeah, it looked like this was just loose too. A little bit of rust in there, I can see. Let's see what's in the bowl. Oh yeah, looks pretty clean. This thing probably will have fired right up. Float looks good. Let's see what we got going on for the main jet. So it looks like the main jet is a 160. Nice and clear. sticky in there and that might be clogged. I'd be really surprised if the pilot wasn't clogged. Pilot is definitely clogged. Holy cow, that's a 72 pilot in there. That is big. And that thing's clogged. So maybe it went to brand. <laughs> Let's try to get out the, uh, the float here. Let's see. Oh, that came right out. No gas in the float, that's good. Needle looks amazing. Perfect. Everything looks really good. Let's see what the air screw is at. Where is that guy? Right there. One. Two. About two and a third. Turns out. Spring comes with it. That looks good. All right, now we can clean up this carb. This one does not need to be ultrasonic cleaner. It's so clean already. We'll just blow through everything and make sure everything's working. We'll take the choke out too, just to make sure. Just to make sure that's working. Yeah, it looks perfect. Make sure that's working. Yep. Looks good. So whole carb we can blow out and uh, get that all cleaned up and put back on the bike. All right, carburetor's back installed there. Let's check the oil before we go on any further with this thing and before we do the first start. So the drain bolt is right there. You can see it. 
bottom of the engine looks pretty good. Let's just check it out. No cracks or holes in the case. It's always a good sign, right? <laughs> Wasn't too bad to get off. Looked a little thin to begin with. Looks like there's some water in there. You can kind of see the bubbles forming like that. Yeah, there's definitely water in there. Oh, that's not good. So I'm wondering if the uh, water pump seals junk. Hmm. <laughs> We'll let the drain for a little bit, come back, and we'll add some fresh oil to it. All right, some fresh oil going in. This takes 800 milliliters. Just using 10W40 wet clutch oil. There wasn't much oil in there. It's a good thing we're changing it. Who thinks this coolant is going to leak all over the place? I kind of have a feeling. So we're hoping that the head gas is good, we're hoping that the lines are good, and we're hoping that it doesn't leak out of the water pump cover. Because usually these corrode and they have a bunch of holes and pits in the, in the water pump. So let's hope it holds coolant here. So far, no drips. I see a drip. Around the water pump here. You can see. Yeah, and the cover. Darn it. That sucks. We're gonna take off this cover. Just see what's going on, that's not good. That can look good. Let's see if I can tap from the back here. There we go. It's coming. Might be missing the gasket. Oof. Oof da. Yeah, she's corroded pretty good. Let's see if the water pump still spins. 
Yeah, it spins, but man. This is what I'm talking about. Look at all that pitting in there. That is not good. <laughs> So, at least the water pump spins. We'll probably have to get a new seal for behind there. I'm guessing that's corroded too, but for the time being what we can do is put gasket material around here. And uh, hopefully that makes that cover seal. It looks like maybe he tried that at one point, but it corroded out. You can see all the corrosion in there. Man, oh man, that sucks. He told me it wasn't that bad, but it looks pretty bad to me. All right, we're using some ultra black gasket maker. It's gonna go around this whole thing. Hopefully this is gonna seal it. It's pretty corroded, so may not. Still dripping a little coolant down here. I need to dry for the gasket. Material to work here. So we get a nice tight seal. I'm putting quite a bit just because there's a lot of imperfections. Let's see if this will go on here. We'll see if that works. All right, gasket material's dry and hardened up. It's been a couple hours. So let's see if it takes coolant now. <laughs> it's not leaking at all. Let's get this cap on. Can't believe it's not leaking. It probably will once we start this thing up. Because it's going to get hot, but right now, it's holding. No leaking whatsoever. So, without further ado, let's see if she fires up here. All right, let's get some 41 mixed up and put in. Alright, 
Let's see if this works. We're hoping it doesn't leak either. Oh yeah, that's working. Working just fine. And uh, if you look, it's not leaking from the petcock at all. So, we got lucky there. Uh, hook it in here. Can wrap this around. Let's see the best way to do this. Choke on, kick this thing over a couple times, see what happens. <laughs> Go. How many kicks will it take? Fired right up. Sounds so good. Uh, let's try to get to idle. See if she fires right back up. She's dialed in. First kick every time. Running great. There's a small exhaust leak coming from the pipe right here. I think the dent right there. I could see some smoke coming from. But uh, the main problem was the leak and that is gone for now at least. So that's really good. Looks like there's some oil coming out of there from when I poured it in there. Yeah, I think she's ready to ride. So, I looked for a back fender. I could not find one, unfortunately. All I had were front ones. So we'll have to order up a rear fender for it. But we can still test drive it without the rear fender. At least we've got enough tread left on the tires here. So, let's go take this out to the land. See what she can do. All right, just made it out here. Let's take this bike for the first ride. Thing's looking clean. Just imagine with the back fender on it. It'd be a super nice bike. All right, let's get this thing unloaded.
first ride ever on a 1983 on the CR250. Kick this thing over, left hand kick. Don't sit up pretty high. Alright, 
I am super impressed with this bike. The power this thing has is very, very good. Um, it's really, really instant on this thing. And I would expect it to be because the compression is so high. But man, I was not thinking it would run this good. I thought for sure like a crank seal or something would be gone and it would be doggy, but man, it is, it is fast. It's really fast. And it's super fun. It feels so light when you're riding it too. Being only 212 pounds, I think it is. Man. Thing is really, really nice. I like it a lot. We gotta get the back fender yet for it, but man, it is really, really fun. There is a crack in the pipe right there. I noticed pretty big one. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but that was getting pretty bad. So it is a little bit loud. And uh, the pipe does hit your leg because you're sitting right here and your thigh hits that pipe. But with pants on, it would be fine. Yeah, zero complaints. Both brakes work great. Clutch works flawlessly. Tires grab good. The only complaint I had was the front tire. It's completely flat. And uh, I just tried pumping it up and I think the tubes, the tubes popped. So we must have hit something, a nail or something, and popped that tube. But yeah, I just can't believe how good this thing runs. So I think that wraps up today's video. This one's probably not a bad option to uh, fully restore. There's definitely some money in the 1980s uh, CR250s. You don't see them very often, and the color scheme is just so sweet on these bikes. You get the blue and the red with the red frame and the simple graphics. I mean, it just looks sweet. We'll get those fork guards, new fender, brand new seat cover, new chain and sprockets, paint up everything, get a new pipe for it. I mean, this thing would be looking immaculate. I'm very happy with this thing, and uh, considering I only paid a thousand bucks, we might be able to restore it. So, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.